there was a report in the Wall Street Journal today about how the NCA owns the trademark for March Madness, but has refused to let the women's tournament use it. Um, they're now saying that they might consider that in the future. Um, what are your thoughts on the NCA's refusal to let the women use it thus far and, and the potential to, to use it in the future? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's the way things have been. And, you know, finally, you know, it, it takes um, just a, you know, a dark cloud over our tournament for, for things to change. And I hope we continue to, um, you know, but we got to continue to just let it be known, you know, the disparities, you know, that, that we're, we're, we're feeling here. And, you know, it, we're talking about student athletes. You know, we're not talking about men's, women's, it's, it's student athletes when it's all said and done and everybody should feel like they are experiencing the most exciting um, and the most luxurious times of their career. You know, we worked hard, just as hard, you know, through a pandemic as anybody else, not even this year, you know, this isn't, this isn't a one year thing. This is, this is happening all, you know, every year for its existence. And um, we, we don't have to have everything the same, trust me, because the things that guys like, you know, women may not like, but we, we do need a personal touch. If you're gonna make it personal for them, then you should make it personal, um, to the women's tournament. And what that is, I don't know, but certainly you got to talk to the student athletes um, because it's it's not right. And I'm gonna take it a step further. You know, when, when me as a coach and anybody in our program commits a violation, an NCAA violation, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's an immediate investigation, right? Mm -hmm. And then if it's a big one, then the school becomes investigated, right? Right? And then there's, there's a thing called lack of institutional control and we're penalized for that. Mm -hmm. When they feel like there's not a whole lot of control taking place and then you get dinged, right? Mm -hmm. They take postseason away. They take, they take scholarships away. They take you know, recruiting days away. And then, you know, me as the head coach, um, if it's my program, then something happens to me. Games are taken away. You can get fined. You know, you're definitely getting a letter in your file. Definitely. So something's got to happen. Something has to happen. So I, I just, I'll leave it. I leave it there. Rules are rules and investigations are investigation. Let's go see. Let's, you know, let's, let's do what you do to every other, to every institution that you deem broke a, broke a rule. Do you, just a quick follow-up. Do you think anyone at the NCAA needs to be held responsible or resign? Um, somebody needs to be held responsible. I'm not, I don't know who, but we did need to find that the investigative work needs to be done to see, you know, where, where things had fallen short, because that's what, that's what happens to each institution that's under the NCAA. Thank you. All right. I think this is all going to stay on topic. So I'm going to go to Patrick and then Alex. Okay. <laughs> just so we hey. don't have to go bounce back and forth coach <laughs> <Got you. laughs> hey coach I wanted to congratulate you uh on 500 wins um I also I I read what you said um to you it sounds like right now the big deal is to get to 501 and to continue uh through the tournament but uh what does it mean to you though to uh to see people to see the overwhelming amount of um respect and support that people have been um, paying to you uh, on social media, on, 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 on different things. How, how does that make you feel? Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't like the spotlight on me at all. I really don't. I'm a person that I like to stay in my lane. I like to, you know, I don't like confrontation. You know, I really don't. People may think I like that, but I don't like confrontation. I don't like the spotlight. 
Um, you know, I do feel like people um, see me as, you know, like one of them. Like I, I feel like I'm, I, I feel like people feel like I'm like the, you know, around the way girl or woman. Um, I think they they see me as one of them, not like a superstar or anything like that. Because I don't I don't present myself that way. Um, never have. I, de- I just my mom instilled humility in me, and I just continue to to walk that path. And you know, people people respect that, and they they do show a lot of love, and that, it makes me feel good. Alex right, and then you. Greg. Hey there, thanks so much for taking the time. Um, Following up on something that you said a minute ago, um, you used the term a dark cloud over our tournament. And I guess I'm curious to get your thoughts on, there's a difference right between playing with these types of conditions that have been highlighted and playing with them without having the media spotlight on them. And I'm curious for you, like just what it feels like to have seen some of the disparities throughout time and not had the spotlight on them in the same way that they have in, in the same uh, attention that they've gotten this year? I mean, what you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> so, you know, for, for, for so many years, and I've been a part of this, this tournament for a lot of years in college, um, as, a, as a coach at Temple, and uh, now a coach at South Carolina. Um, you know, when it's your first time going through it, you're, you're really just happy to be here you don't really see anything different because you're just, you're just happy to be here. And then if you talk to some of the coaches that have done this for 30 years, um, they, they know there's a big difference. Um, and, and here's the thing we're, we're, we're coaches. I mean, we're, we, we got a, we got a community men's and women. Like we talk, we talk a great deal to each other. Um, to see, you know, what's happening out there. Um, I, I I like the fact that the light is is shining on both tournaments um, in a good and a bad way. So we can see um, what needs to happen to move our tournament forward and to ensure that our student athletes, our, our you know, female student athletes are getting what they deserve because they talk as well. And they know what, they know what their counterparts are getting um, from, you know, the swag bags to, to, you know, what they, what they get per diem, you know, they know exactly what each other are getting. And when it's different, we have to answer those questions. They bring the questions to us and, you know, what, what, what am I, what am I supposed to say to them? Can I ask a follow? Go Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you just mentioned the per diem. Is there a per diem difference at the two tournaments? I mean, they. One of my players said it was. I don't know for sure, so I have to. I have to go ask a counterpart what that is. Um, and if it's a difference, then you know we need to correct that. I I know when I was at Temple, there was a difference by ten dollars a day, and once I found out, you know, I I went. So our players got whatever the men's players got, just because it's it's. It's not right. We're 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 under the same umbrella, you know. We're under you know the same institution. Um, it's only right. They don't you know men don't do anything different than what we do. Do they? Are they revenue producing? Absolutely. So is football. You know. So is you know. So is men's basketball. Well, there's enough for everybody to go around. Just because they're the revenue producing. You know, there, there are bylaws that says, you know, Title IX, that's a law. We can't feel it. You can't, you can't make our players feel what they're feeling. You can't make them feel inferior to, you know, their, their counterparts. And that's what it feels like. Um, and I'm not talking about a weight room. Trust me, it, it's not an, equi- an equipment thing. It's not a swag bag thing. You know, those are the things that were brought to light, you know, to to bring about the, you know, the other stuff, you know, from the planning, from from all of it, the rollout of where where we're going to have our tournaments. 
all of that stuff should have been rolled out at the same time. Everything should have been working in concert with men's basketball and women's basketball. You know, what are you doing for your student athletes? What are you doing for yours? What let's, you know, let's collaborate. Let's, let's, let's make sure we're, we're putting our best foot forward for both tournaments. Thank you. Greg, and then it's really simple. I mean, it's a simple, it's simple. It's like, if you have a child, a boy and a girl that want to play a sport, do you pour into your son more than your daughter because he could potentially be an NBA player versus a WNBA player? That's not how parenting works. It's not, not how, that's not how it works. If you don't have enough to provide for both, then no one can do it. Or you sit down and you talk. You say, hey, you know, I only have, I only have enough money for one of you to go, you know, to an AAU summer. Let's discuss it as a family. And then you come and that's how you talk about things. You just don't say, okay, you know, Sammy, you go. You know, Julie, you got to stay, you know, got to stay home. That, that's not how it works. And that's not how it should work. 